Today's case involves a geologist who disappeared in the Arizona desert. Today we're talking about the disappearance of Daniel Robinson. Daniel Robinson was a young man who was a geologist in Arizona who disappeared in 2021. Daniel went to university to study geology and he graduated with a degree in it and he moved it from where he went to school in South Carolina to Arizona for a job in his field. Daniel went missing on June 23rd of 2021. He went missing near Buckeye, Arizona. Buckeye, Arizona is about 40 miles west of Phoenix, Arizona. Essentially, Daniel went to his job and he left his job site, which was in the middle of a desert in Arizona. And that was the last known sighting of him. Daniel's father, who was a military, uh, he was in the military. Daniel's father was David Robinson II. And saw combat, drove from South Carolina to Arizona to try to lead the search for him. Kind of following, discovering some of the events surrounding his disappearance and some of the events that led up to his disappearance was found that uh, Daniel was in a kind of, um, Daniel was in kind of a, possibly seemed as a kind of a lonely state. He had moved basically across the country where he didn't really know a lot of people. He didn't really have a lot of friends. When uh, Daniel's father was able to see his apartment, it looked very disheveled. Daniel was reportedly not a very organized person person but this was kind of extremely disheveled with just clothes all laying around food all over the place dishes piled up in the sink and that, that was concerning to Daniel's family because they felt that was too too unorganized it, it was also found out that uh, Daniel in his uh, spare time also delivered for DoorDash which DoorDash is a food delivery service you can order something from a restaurant and they'll deliver it to you to your house and through that he met a girl that he was interested in and it, it appears they went on a date but it appeared that through their text conversation there was some erratic behavior there were some unusual messages in the text conversation the girl basically told daniel to kind of stop talking to him and there was something with a hammock that he left at her house and she she was uncomfortable with how he tried to get it back so that was an unusual situation and some people conclude with that with the text conversation that daniel was had some erratic behavior and he wasn't thinking straight so daniel disappeared on june 23rd 2021 this was only a couple months after COVID vaccines were available to the general public, three, four months of just normal, getting things back to normal. If you can remember, things did not uh, open up right up again that summer though. People were going back out there. They were uh, doing things, but it was a lot of, it, it, you had to learn how to live life again. And Daniel appeared to be very, iso somewhat isolated in uh, Arizona. So that was a mental, there was a lot of mental problems going on for all sorts of people that summer of 2021, just coming after the pandemic. So Daniel's father, he gets to Arizona, they do all the searching. Daniel's father did a great job of publicizing his son's disappearance case. And they had civilian air patrol go all around the desert trying to look for any sign of Daniel. One of the issues here though, and the scary things is it being a desert, obviously it's very hot. You need water to survive there. There's also animals. This being the Arizona desert, it's on the border with Mexico. There could be cartels, guns in Arizona. So there's a lot of, you don't want to be in the desert by yourself <laughs> with no contact to the outside world. But a lot of these searches that Daniel uh, Daniel's father led, they didn't really find anything. 
It was, eventually though, there was a break in the case and on July 19th of 2021, just about a month later, Daniel's car was found. And his car was found in a desert, like ravine, and, and it was on its side. It was a really bad accident. But the keys were still in his car and there were even some of his clothes, I think all of his clothes around the car. So it's possible one can conceive that he stripped naked after his car crash, but there was no sign of Daniel. The show disappeared. I watched in some of my research for this case. Daniel's father actually hired a private investigator who specialized in vehicle crashes. And the vehicle crash in this case, according to the investigator, was extremely su suspicious. It was extremely suspicious because they were able to find like the black box, the black box of his car, and right before his car uh, crashed, they, they were it was going speeds of 30 miles per hour, and the investigator basically said he tried to recreate him going 30 miles per hour in the desert, and it was impossible. He could only get his car up to like 15 miles per hour because there were just so many rocks, turns. It was just not drivable, real, really smooth driving terrain. That he, he concluded that the way the car was found was extremely suspicious. He believed someone put it there and it was not a natural crash. Also, it's very suspicious how the car was found a month later when they were doing all these kind of air patrols, people flying overhead looking for Daniel. How was something not found? He was only found three miles from his last known location and how could no one see the the crash car so it's a kind of a real perplexing mystery you have the, the way the car was found in a suspicious manner how come no one saw the car it's definitely pretty suspicious but uh, as for now that's really all we have in this case this is a case that's uh, relatively recent only happened two years ago and uh, I think it's definitely not, it's not a good, uh, things are not looking good for Daniel's survival being in the desert, but there might be a resolution to this case. One of the awesome things I didn't mention earlier, Daniel had a very unique physical trait where his, I believe his right hand was missing. So if Daniel could have been located it stands out. He had he had a, his hand was basically cut off here. He had his other hand, but the way he was born, he's missing his right hand. And uh, Daniel's parents said that you know he accepted it and just said this is who I am, and he didn't uh, he didn't wallow in pity from what appears from missing his hand. But if he could find a hand or a skeleton or something like that, that'd be very easy to identify. If they could find someone without a hand, that would be very easy to identify. But that's really all we have for this case. If you want to hear more true crime content from YouTube's best amateur detective, subscribe to Crime Dad Today.